Good morning, traders. This is Bruce at VeloxPro. If you can hear me and see my screen, just type yes in the questions. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, today we have uh, Jason Ramos with us, uh, and uh, he's going to present how he trades and how he looks at the limit order book in Bookmap uh, and uh, uh, how to... Um, uh, optimize uh, those uh, those trades uh, from the higher time frame uh, into the order flow, uh, and uh, I'll let him explain more. Uh, let me uh, get to a few details uh, firsthand. Uh, we are having a uh, a 33 percent discount on Bookmap. Now this is for the advanced version only. It's not for the uh, for the basic, and it's for uh, the quarterly. Uh, and uh, uh, this is new uh, introduction here for advanced yearly, okay? So um, uh, you are able to uh, save quite a bit uh, with the uh, yearly. You can subscribe to it for the entire year uh, at that 33% uh, discount, okay? And the, um, uh, so you can see it's uh, $66 per month. Um, and uh, uh, that will be the charge uh, for uh, the quarterly as well as the advanced. Okay. Any questions, you can reach out to us at support at veloxpro.com. Uh, and um, uh, let me uh, get uh, read uh, through here um, Jason's uh, a bit of Jason's bio. Um, in just a minute here, I just had it, and now I don't. Okay, ah, here we go. Okay, so Jason's been trading for quite a while now, 15 plus years, so he has a, a, a ton of experience. Uh, he's he's traded stocks, options, forex, basically basically everything. Uh, is uh, an educator uh, and trainer, uh, and as well has worked uh, at a at a brokerage. Uh, so uh, someone here that has a, a lot of background and a lot of experience in these markets, uh, and we're uh, very happy to have him here. Um, and um, uh, just to uh, also show, uh, he has a, a website here. I'm going to put this into the chat for you. Okay, there you go. Uh, and uh, then he also has a Twitter feed here as well. And I'm going to put that into the chat. All right, there you go. Okay, so uh, yeah, the website here is uh, Day Trading Fearless. And um, uh, go check that out. And uh, without further ado, uh, I'll introduce uh, Jason here and uh, take it away. Hey, Bruce. Hey, everybody. How's everyone doing today? Uh, if you guys could hear me, if you could just kind of let me know. Yep, you're all good. Oh. Loud and clear. Oh, okay. And you guys are able to see my screen? Yes. Okay, okay, perfect. So today, um, like Bruce, I, I run uh, the website Day Training Fearless. Um, what I do is I, I base a lot of my own trading off uh, support and resistance. I'm more of a counter trend trader uh, type of person, but I also do look for trend trading too sometimes. Um, so I'm going to show you guys a couple strategies that I use using a book map with my own strategies that I've learned throughout the years. And I actually have videos up on YouTube that you could go watch and see of how to do this, but I'm going to do this more in depth. Um, and if you guys have any questions through throughout the thing, just type them in. Bruce will uh, let me know, and we'll get those uh, questions answered for you um, as we go along. So, um, um, so, so I'm sorry, Jason. Just, <laughs> uh, just uh, one one thing I needed to cover, and I, I forgot. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, this is a risk disclaimer. Uh, trading futures uh, involves substantial risk of loss is not suitable for all investors. So past performance is not indicative of future results. Sorry about that. I need to get that out of the way uh, and uh, take it take it from there. Okay, uh, not a problem. Yeah, and um, so. So for for me, I mainly trade the uh, E-mini S&Ps. I've done everything. I've done stocks, forex, options, futures, and the E-minis have just something that I've gravitated to throughout the years. They they trade very clean. Um, there's hardly ever slippage. They're very technical. That's the reason. I like trading them, and one one of the things one of my very first mentors told me when I first started trading was focus on one thing, 
learn one thing and learn it really well, know everything about it. And that's kind of what I've done with the e-mini S&Ps. And once uh, one of my uh, friends told me about Bookmap, I looked at it because I used to look at the bid and ask for support and um, support and resistance or where where the big order flow is. Bookmap has actually made it so helpful for me to visualize this. And here's a perfect example. Okay, so right here we have the white line. And look at the big order. We have 1,400 um, buyers down here. The way I read something like this is, okay, 2351 level, what's down there? Okay, why, why are there so many buyers down at that level? So what I'll do is I'll go to my charts and I look at multiple things on my charts. I'll look at um, market profile, Fibonacci levels, um, you name it. I, I kind of look at it. And one of the things that I do is I draw zones. And this is part of kind of my bread and butter for myself is I look for where buyers could step in um, on, the, on the bigger time frame. So one of the charts I really like to use are the 15 minute, 20 day charts. Okay, and what they show me is a, a previous swing highs, swing lows. There's multiple reasons um, why I draw zones where they are due to Fibonacci's swing highs, swing lows. So as you can see, and I drew these zones. I've, I've had these zones up for a long time, waiting for the market to come down. And look at where we came right down to. We bounced, okay? We, we literally came one tick from the low. But inside this zone, what I'll do is I'll pull up book map and I see, hey, 51, well, that's the back of my zone. That's where the buyer should step in, okay? Because anywhere in the zone, and is all book map does is it confirms it for me, if that makes sense, okay? What's happening is, is buyers are coming down, price is falling. I could see exactly, okay, hey, where do I want to enter? And if I zoom in, I'll be able to kind of get a, cl a clearer picture um, where liquidity is, where where's the best place to front run? Think of it that way. Where's the best place I could front run? And a lot of times the way I use Bookmap is I'll look at the, the red and green, um, the COB, and I also look at the numbers, okay, of how many contracts there are on the bid and the uh, ask of both sides. And those are going to help me, okay, hey, I, maybe I want to front run this by a couple ticks. Maybe I'll leave it. But as price is coming down, the other thing I'll look at is volume. Because usually lows and highs are made with volume spikes. Okay, today's probably not the best day because we're in a one direction market, but usually um, as price makes a, a parabolic move up or down, you'll usually see uh, spikes. But look at this, real interesting how price was at 1400, now as we're starting to move down, it's only at uh, 1000. Okay, so what that's telling me is, okay, hey, they're pulling liquidity, but it's still there. So one thing that I would, I would not be surprised to see is for price to either come down to about the 5150 level and bounce, or come to the 51, maybe dip its head below and then reverse. <clears throat> and though, those are the things that I'll look for, okay? Going back to my charts, is as you could see, we actually have a zone here, but on the bigger picture too, um, <clears throat> I'll look at Fibonacci's uh, extensions mainly for where price could go. And this is um, Fibonacci's from the overnight high and low, okay? And this is one thing that I'll look at. And let's kind of back up earlier during the day. So the white lines are the first hour high and low. The green are the 27 
uh, per some uh, extension. The yellow is the 61.8, and then the uh, red is a 100% move. So as price is falling, as we could see price falls, we come down, we come down to the green, okay, uh, the 27. Here, <clears throat> the first time we come down, we kind of bounce, we blow through, but then the buyers step in at this 26 level. So what I'll do is I'll look at my book map usually, and I'll look to see is there support at that level? Are there big buyers? And <coughs> sorry about that. Um, so as there's buyers at my support levels, okay, and book, uh, book map confirms it, that makes my entry and the, the way I feel about my entry that much more confident. Okay, and book map gives me the ability to be able to look at, hey, are these really big uh, bid offers? Are they fake? Are they um, secure? It's kind of like this uh, Twain right here, this guy right here, this uh, 5975 or this uh, 2360 level. Well, this, is, this has been there all morning. But as price gets back up here, is it still going to be there? What I look at are these two white lines, okay? Because these are, what happens is it shows you the most current 10 ticks above, 10 ticks below. So as price gets up here, this is what the order was showing a while back, okay? The last time price was reflecting and updating, well, this hasn't updated yet until price reaches up there. And then all of a sudden, we might get it up there and there's 600 contracts. I'm, then I sit there and I go, hey, do I still like this level? I then see this and I go, okay, hey, what's at this 2360 level? So I'll go to my charts and I'll kind of look on my chart. What's at the 2360 level? And I'll be honest with you, I really don't see anything significant. Where I do see it is at this swing low and this swing low because this was the breakdown level right here. And I'll just kind of draw a little rectangle. Okay, that was the breakdown level and that's around 61. 50. Okay, so maybe it comes up here and then it finds the sellers. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be watching book map to see as price rallies back up to this level, is it secure? <clears throat> are, are, are the buyers still there? Or maybe does this white line disappear? And then what happens is they kind of move their orders up. This 975, uh, 895, maybe those start to jump up to the 1,000, 1,200, 1,300. And I'll look to front run that into strength. Again, I am a counter trend trader, so a lot of the things that I look for is counter trending. Um, another thing, and I kind of was uh, talking with Bruce earlier, I want to show you guys how I, I use my notes because one of the things that I find really helpful is on this chart right here. So these two yellow lines are the first hour high and low. They, they automatically plot on my software, and it plots the first hour high, the first hour low from the market open at 9.30 Eastern time. The red lines are the 38% uh, and the 61% Fibonacci retracements of these uh, levels. And I find these very, very useful, especially for uh, intraday trading. As you could see, price, we break through the first hour low, and where do we bounce? We bounce right off the 38%. Now, when I look for a bounce, I'm looking for a point, two points. I don't look for big moves because every it's a lot easier to get one or two points than to get five or ten points the whole key to it is scale, okay? And if you go, 
maybe instead of going one contract, you go two or three contracts to get the same move as you would on one contract for 10 points uh, or five points. So what I do is I just look for, okay, hey, what's the state of the market? Where do I want to be a buyer? So what I'll do is I'll use these levels. Well, look at what's at this 51 level, okay? Because remember, we were talking earlier about this uh, big order at 11.48. Well, guess what? We now know what's at this uh, 51 level. It's the 61.8% Fibonacci extension from the first hour low. So that's why bookmap kind of opens up my eyes and opens up the entire world for me to see where the big players are because the market's all about psychology markets about um, the biggest enemy is yourself okay you need to fight through your thoughts you need to fight through should I take this trade? Should I do this? Should I not do that? Am I fearful to pull the trigger? What if it doesn't work out, right? Those are all the things that we need to be afraid of. And sometimes you need to take all those thoughts and just let them go and think about the winning side and not the losing side. And here's a perfect example, right, of we came down, price started to fall, and we we came two ticks, okay, the low was 51.50, and we bounced all the way up to 53. That's a point and a half uh, type of trade. Now, the CVP I love because it shows me exactly how many contracts went off um, at the low. So we know, hey, there was 253 contracts traded at the lows, okay? That's kind of, for me, telling me, Hey, maybe the lows are in, maybe not because it's a weak low, but I'd rather see more taper. So if anybody knows uh, market profile, and here's the breakthrough. Look at that. They just, uh, all that liquidity disappeared, but then look at the price. I kind of said earlier when we first started talking, I won't be surprised to see price come down, okay? It came down, it tested. If you front, uh, front ran it, you made maybe a point or so, you were in and out of the market. Second time, it comes through, it comes all the way through, but then at the 2350, look at this, you have another big order that didn't pretty much not even budge as price came down to it, and here's another bounce. And I was saying, hey, watch price, we might come down and then start to rally above it, and look at the 61% Fibonacci retracement, or sorry, extension, we came right down to it, it would have picked you up, and we could have gotten a quick point because your entry would have been right around that 51 level. Now, the market's weak today because every bounce they're selling, as you could see. So, so it's one of those tricky markets that, um, that are happening today for Bookmap. So we're just not seeing that normal market that, hey, I, I feel very secure, we kind of need to be really careful and maybe potentially look for other sig signals to enter, something like this. I use the 512 tick chart, nice reversal candle at the lows with, you can even call this, uh, divergence. That's another thing that I look for is divergence is we're making lows, what's the uh, RSI doing, um, or uh, you could use the MACD or the stochastics. Also, what's happening with market profile? These are the other things that I'm looking for. Now I know there, this uh, chart down here is a one day, today only, regular trading hours, three minute. So this is showing me the market profile for today. As you can see, we actually have multiple points of control, okay, or high volume nodes that are starting to stick out. And each one of these could actually act as a resistance on the way back up. So I'll be watching all this. So um, if we come back up, let's watch the 55, 56 level. 
also the 62 to probably 64 level, and that's where we can pull up bookmap and say, hey, where's liquidity showing? Where could we find levels of support or resistance? Where would we want to maybe front run? <clears throat> so right here, again, watching our range bound of 10 ticks above and below, let's see if we get back up to 52, if this liquidity is still here, because right here at 52, we're starting to build it, but I would be looking more probably around this 55 to 57 level. Also, at 55, you have the 38% FIB extension that usually what price will want to do is fall, rally, and is it, is it uses it as support on the way down, it will use as resistance on the way back up. Now another thing that I want to go, go over with you guys is um, a really cool feature with a book map, it's called Notes, and I was kind of waiting uh, for this to do it so I could show you guys how I do my notes, okay, uh, for using Bookmap. So I use everything through Google Sheets, or uh, yeah, uh, through Google. And it's pretty simple uh, to set this up. All you need to do, just go into the Excel side of uh, Google. First, uh, first one will be symbol, right, ESM7. Second will be price, third will be notes, the color, um, and then the text alignment, I do center. So what I'll do is I'll look and I'll bring this over like this. And I'll look at, okay, the 38% Fibonacci high is 89, so, so 23, 89.50. So I'll go in here. And I just update these levels every morning once they start to uh, form. So we'll go 23.85.30. Um, I'll do the uh, first hour, 23.78. And the first hour low. And then 50, 55 and right here is 51. Okay, and then also what I'll do is sometimes I'll put in a Fibonacci, so I'll use my major support and resistance levels uh, right here. So we'll say uh, 2350, okay, is what we'll say is the number. I then go to File, Download, and use the comma separated values or the CSV. I save that to my file. All I do is I take this, I drag it right here, okay, to my desktop. I leave it, minimize this, and then in book map, I'll go to file, uh, open user folder, and I look for the config file. I'll open up that file and I'll look for the book map. Okay, whatever I name it, I name it uh, main book map level, so the current month. I delete this and I just take this and drag it in like that. And I close that. That's all I need to do. And then I come over to the notes, import notes. I select the main book map. And here are all my levels. So now what happens is I have all my levels of my major support. Okay, these blue blue levels are going to be these major levels right here. And look at how we came down. So we, and again, these are levels that I personally draw on my own um, every weekend. So uh, they're just major, major levels of where I want to be a buyer or seller throughout the week. It's kind of like part of my trade plan. But look at this. The very first one, we came one tick and we bounced, right? How do I know that? Because it's a doji, right? That was the low. We came within one tick. Then it came through the market strong. Second, came 
literally to the top of the zone and bounced, and the third one came within one tick into the zone and we bounced. Okay, so all three of these levels you could say worked uh, for a quick scalp trade. But what I do is I have those same levels marked here in the blue, which are major support. And then here's the Fibonacci. So as we could see, as we zoom in, we see there's somewhat of a, a whitish line, kind of a little wider than the others. And with these lines, I have the 38% here. Also, we have the 61. Like I said, old support becomes new resistance. If you look on the way back up at this 51, as we came down, we bounced, okay? And then as we broke through, we came back. And I use these levels as a guide for, you know, for quick little scalping type of trades. Okay, now the trades are over. The trade earlier was probably the, the uh, front run of this or the front run of this white line. Now what we need to do is wait for the market to kind of settle out, see what it wants to do. We know the market is way oversold uh, currently. So what I'll do is I'll just maybe look at my uh, zones. I'll start to trade a plan or sort of create a plan while the market's falling and say, hey, wh where could the market go? Okay, maybe I'll start to draw Fibonacci's from this swing high down to this swing low right here. Okay, I'll use the 30, the 38, the 50, and the 61 as my levels. Well, we know 59 is the 38% retracement, okay? The 63 is the 50 and the 66 is the 61. I'll come over here, look at my uh, market profile. And up here at 59, we have a low volume node, okay? Probably right inside here. Um, so, as we start to rally, I'll probably look for this level for a quick short, which would also be right below um, this um, uh, point of control. But I won't be surprised to watch them build this out and bring the point of control lower. The other thing um, that I'll look at, and I'm also, we'll say, a student of Future Trader 71, um, I'll, I watch the 50%. Uh, level two for a quick uh, pullback, okay, for the very first touch. And I actually have that code um, on my platform that I always watch. So the main thing is I'm looking for confluence of levels, and then I'll sit there and I'll look at book map of, hey, what levels are there and where could the buyers and sellers be? And do they match up with multiple things? Okay, that I'm that I'm personally looking for. So as we could see, um, I like to zoom out too because I'm able to get a different picture. And another great tool that I love is the lines. Just to draw your basic trend lines. Okay, um, we have one here, and then we have one here. And this is actually a great tool if you enjoy drawing lines because now we could say, hey, at, we know this is a major downtrend, right? From way up here, just connecting all the highs. What happens if price rallies back up to this 55 level, which is also the 38? So a lot of things are starting to kind of come into play for me, maybe I'll look to short this the very first time. Okay, um, a couple things uh, that I want to show you guys are my settings of what I use too for my, my, uh, white, my white lines, um, just the colors and the brightness. These are mine if you want to take a screenshot of them, but this is what I like to use because I found this kind of works best when I zoom in and also when I zoom out. 
there's it kind of shows me bigger players on the outside, bigger major support and resistance. But when I zoom in, there's not too much noise either for me. If I want, there are times where I'll just kind of bring this in and just kind of see, okay, hey, I only want to see really, really big players, okay, meaning uh, high support, resistance levels uh, on the bid and ask side. So as we start to rally, look at all the buyers starting to come in, right, all this liquidity. I'll come over here, hey, why is it, what's happening at that level? And then I'll look over at my market profile. The other thing I'll do is look at my Fibonacci's, okay? On this, okay, we still have the first hour low, or sorry, a 100% move from the first hour high and low down. This 59 level, I, I would probably say even 57, um, I would not be surprised to see buyers, uh, or sorry, sellers step back in. The trend is lower today. The market is weak. So it's a couple of those things um, that as the market, and there's really nothing showing me right now, because I'll be honest with you, there's nothing. We're just kind of in no man's land right now. Um, we need to be patient and wait for the trade to set up. But in the meantime, what we're going to do is we need to sit there and plan what's our next line of attack. Okay, so right here at the 46 level, even the 45, we see, okay, there's some major support here. But then there's also um, support here because we could just tell by the white lines, um, okay, hey, there's liquidity coming into the market. Every time we fall, we start to see liquidity uh, come into the market. So um, what happens? No, no, from here, for, for me, this is where I sit there, and this is kind of, maybe I'll touch a bit on the psychology side, is this is where the psychology of trading really has to come in. Don't overtrade. Don't trade if there's not a high probability trade there. And right now we're in that level. There's really not a high probability trade. I think the high probability trade is a bounce back up uh, to maybe this 55 to 57 level. Um, maybe see what price does at the 52, 53 level. <clears throat> or maybe look for another flush and watch what happens with this liquidity down here. Because right now we have 1,300 contracts um, at the 46 and a quarter uh, level. <coughs> so the other thing that I like to look at is divergence. Okay, I love, love divergence. And what I'll do is I'll look and I'll say, okay, hey, every time we're making new lows, are we making higher lows? This time, I believe we're going to flush right through and we're going to probably go lower. So what I might do, and this is something that I love for measured moves, is I'll take my Fibonacci extension tool. I go to the high and the low of this swing low right here. I bring it back up. And now I have levels of where potential support. Here's our 27, our 61, and our 100% move. Um, these are the levels, or you could call it the 127, the 161, or uh, 200. But it's essentially this leg of the move. These are the Fibonacci levels. And look at how we came almost right down to this 46 level. We also have a 4450 level. We pull up book map and remember this 46, as price is coming down, watch what happens. And you see people trying to front run this level quite a bit. 
okay? Or we, we may double, uh, double bottom, you can even almost call that a triple. We have a nice clean waterfall with the reversal, and here comes uh, price starting to bounce right off that 60, uh, that 50, or uh, 46 and a quarter level. This is where bookmap is really good because if you're able to front run and kind of anticipate where price is going to bounce from, at what levels will price bounce, then this is something that's going to be really, really helpful for you in your trading with Bookmap. Okay, and use all the tools that you have. For me, I, I just look at a couple things. So right now we're, uh, we're coming through, we're taking up liquidity. As we come down, think of this, we have three levels of support that it has to get through, right? Three levels, so where's our second level? It's starting to go through, right? Now our third, but once all this has been sucked up, all these are buyers down here, right? These are all buyers looking to buy the market. Well, they keep stepping back in. I like this, and I'll look, is there divergence on my small time frame? And you could you could say yes, potentially, right? Now, what what we need to see is kind of like that waterfall effect where price reverses and goes back up. Okay, um, kind of think of it as the stair stepping, right? Every high is making a lower high, right? Well, the minute price breaks above its previous high, here's a perfect example is every candle's making a lower high. And then on this candle, it makes a higher high. And then what does price do? It bounces. Now, we are in a weak market. This bounce was weak, but you saw the same thing here. Lower highs, and then the bounce. Okay, here, lower high multiple lower highs, right? And look at this bounce, and the way to trade this is you could go along here, one tick above that candle, and your stop would go one tick below. Well, if we look at book map, we kind of saw all three, and guess what? We took up all that liquidity in book map, and there's nothing left, right? There's no more buyers, or sorry, um, sellers because the sellers had been exhausted all the buyers just came in and dominated and we rally back up now remember this trend line see how we keep finding support or sorry resistance at the trend line well we found it for a second now we're above it and price is starting to rally so what we need to do is we need to figure out where is the next stop? And as we zoom in, we'll be able to see, hey, is price actually going to come up to all this with our major trend line on the bigger time frame, right, of book map as we zoom out? Is this going to act as a, or a resistance level when we get there? Well, if we look to the left, we could see old support, right? Let's draw, draw a line real quick. Right here, okay. Old support becomes a new resistance. So now what I want to see is if price does rally up, kind of X marks the spot, we'll see if there are sellers here that as we rally back up to this trend line and this trend line, will book maps start to show, will all this white um, liquidity still be there of sellers looking to get short the market?
Okay. Um, if anybody has any questions, uh, or Bruce, if there's any questions, if you want, let me know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, get your questions in. Uh, there's a few here uh, already, and I, you were just going uh, along so well. Uh, I thought I'd hold off. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, about about the uh, the notes. Um, so you update your spreadsheet uh, one at one hour after the open. Is that correct? Uh, correct. So so for for myself. I have a special code, okay, that actually plots these levels for me, okay. Um, if, it, if anybody uses Thinkorswim and they want any of these codes, um, like this first hour, um, just to let Bruce know or let me know, you could send an email to Jason at Day Train Fearless, and I'll send those out to you guys. Um, so you can have them, but I do, these will start to plot one hour after the market opens. So for the first hour, you won't see anything because it needs to make the first hour high and low, okay? And then once it makes that first hour high and low, then it'll actually start to plot these throughout the entire day. And one of the cool things is I'll use these uh, and like today is probably not the best example because we're in such a bearish market. I mean, look at what the market's done since we opened straight down, right? Um, but yes, essentially I'll wait till the first hour and then I'll plot these levels, uh, go to the notes, update the notes so I have them, and then plot them into uh, my book map. Okay, um, so um, question here about, uh, I mean, you, you've traded, you're looking at many, many things, uh, and I, I guess this is based on all of your experience, uh, but it, it, it seems kind of like you're, you're reverse engineering uh, the, the book map in, in a sense. Um, you see liquidity, and there's some interest there. Something's going on, uh, and uh, you know there's interested players. Uh, and then what you will do then is is go to your higher time frames uh, in a lot of cases, and and then verify that. It, it, would would that be a, a correct assessment? Um, yeah. So be believe it or not, I only look at a couple things. It probably seems like a lot, and I'm trying to kind of shove a lot into one hour. Um, but I look at market profile, okay, to, to make this as simple as possible. I look at market profile. I look at um, Fibonacci extensions or Fibonacci retracement levels. And then I look at, um, like, major support and resistance levels, meaning levels that, I draw uh, based off swing highs, swing lows. Like I'll probably look at this as a swing high, um, right here. Okay, and I'll look at this level, and I'll probably draw a resistance zone at that level because this is where the scene of the crime is, the breakdown. Right. So, so if we ever get back up here, I'll use that as a resistance level. But I, I mainly only look at a couple things. Um, and what I do is I try and tie confluence, meaning, okay, is there a 2355 we have, what was support is now going to act as resistance, more than likely. We see it over and over, right? We support, we bounce, we fail, we come back, resistance, we fail, come back, we fail. Support, okay, we come down, we bounce, we fail, we come back up, now it's acting as resistance, we fall, touch it, resistance, right? So if we come back up to this, the very first touch after it being so far away, I'm going to look at this as a resistance level, okay? What I then do is take book map, 
and maybe I'll look at my market profile. What's a 355? Well, there's a high volume node starting to form, correct? So I'll then go to book map and I'll wait for price to rally up into that level and I'll look to see are those lines white? Do we start to have white lines? Meaning is there high liquidity? And I could use it just like this. Like if you see kind of like market profile, price may slip right here, but then you'll get stuck right at this 52 level. As price starts to rally and we see price being updated, is that liquidity still there? Yes, it is. I want to take that short. So what I've done is I've created a short-term plan just by looking at Fibonacci levels, extensions, um, uh, in the market profile. So I, I, I hope that helps. I just use bookmap as kind of my final, okay, this is, yes, I see liquidity at all the places I see resistance. I want to short that. I want to front run that uh, short. I hope that that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, the the um, questions here about uh, some of your settings, if you could maybe show the, the uh, heat map settings again, and then also the, the uh, volume um, settings, because uh, uh, very, very high setting it looks like you have on your filtering of volume. Okay, uh, yeah, so these are uh, my settings that I have. Um, like I say, there, there, there have been times where I'll actually take my contrast all the way down to zero, so I only see major big players. It, it kind of cleans up the noise for me. Um, so, but these are usually about my settings. I, I found they work good in both. It keeps a lot of the noise out for myself. Um, and then as far as vol um, the volume dots, I actually have 2,500. And, and, and I'll tell you why. I like my charts somewhat clean, especially on a book map. Um, I only want to see where the big volume is going off. I don't care about 500 contracts, 300. Um, I know some people enjoy it. For me, I want to see what the the candles look like, if that makes sense, right? I want to see, okay, what's price doing? Where is um, a support or resistance level? Something like if we draw right here. Okay, I'm able to look and say, hey, look, we have an inverse head and shoulders. Here's a shoulder a head, a shoulder, here's our neckline, okay, and as price, I'm able to see the patterns really well, and with, if I start putting dots all over the place, that just kind of confuses it. Uh, for, for me, personally, I, I go, okay, that's way too much for me, so I want to be able to see, hey, I see we bounced here, old support became new resistance, so on, so on. Okay, where can I see? Now here, real quick, the line, remember we drew this line? Look at what happened. It came right to the trend line and they reversed. But for me, there wasn't a lot of volume up here because it kind of disappeared as we got there. So I personally would not have taken that trade if that helps. So. But, um, but yeah, so those are my volume settings. Um, I use 2,500, I leave it there. And because again, very high volume usually means uh, the lows. And you could see, uh, lows are highs. Here, that flush, and then we bounce. So. Okay, um, let's see here. and. Um, um, will you? Um, well, I, I book map for for stocks. Uh, Jesus is uh, is coming uh, soon. 
Uh, but um, uh, I guess uh, Jesus is asking if you use the same type of um, uh, trading methodologies for, uh, for, for trading stocks. So you, you can. Um, I, I'll be honest with you, one of my favorite trading uh, tools is the Fibonacci extension or uh, retracement. That is probably one of my favorite um, extensions. It, it is because price reacts, the algos react to those levels. Look at this. Remember we drew this earlier? So, so once you're able to identify a pattern, draw the, and, and again, these are the numbers I use. The, the 127, the 161A, and the uh, 1.80, or, or I'm sorry, the uh, two, uh, 200. Okay, so it's a, like a 100% move of it. And I love using those because that's what the algos use, and they know it quicker than we do. But as far as going to stocks, yeah, you could use them on stocks, but the problem that I see with stocks versus um, a future, especially the e-minis. The e-minis, everybody's watching the same movie. There's only one liquidity place. That's the CME. It's first in, first out. There's nothing. There's no black pools. There's no uh, front running. You don't have brokers that could see your orders coming down and jump in front and take it. Um, so these aren't going to work. Um, everything I use will work on any stock, any product, stocks, Forex, uh, other futures, but they're not going to work as well because of the gray area in the market that the stocks deal with. Okay. Um, all right. So. Um, and then a question here: um, how, how are you? Uh, you're powering your your book map. So I use a stage five um, to run everything through. So uh, one of the great things, and and I've been with stage five for a year, and I think they're actually one of the best brokers out there for futures. Uh, and I, I get nothing by endorsing them. It's just, a, I think the one thing that I love about using them is I don't need to have stage five open to be able to trade uh, with book map. I could use, just open my book map and the API connects and I'm able to uh, place all my orders directly through here. So if I want to do, um, bracket orders, anything like that, I can actually trade directly from Bookmap itself. So I can left click and put a buy order, I can right click, put a sell order. Um, I could do anything I can, but I don't have to open up another platform, so it's less intensive on uh, my computer. Um, and it just kind of keeps everything quick, simple, and easy. Okay, so and um, let's see. Um, we have uh, uh, David asking, how many trades do you take a day on average? So for me, I my goal is one one trade a day, maybe two or three, but that's it. All I do is I I look for a high probability trade. I look for because. Remember, it's all about scale, and I think uh, Future 71 um, was talking about this a while back in one of his, his things where he doesn't look for big moves, and, and I agree with him. Do if he, It's so much easier to get one or two or three points than to try and get a 10-point runner. I, it, everything just becomes scale at that time, meaning you go two, three, four contracts to get that same one or two points because I'm just looking, I call them smash and grab trades where it's get in and get out. 
okay? Because I have no clue where the market's going. I have an assumption, okay? I could tell you right now, hey, okay, the lows might be in for a while just because of the pattern, okay, of all these things. But as price rallies, I'm, I'm looking for the most high probability type of trade possible, okay? And that's where that's the world I look at and so I'll look for levels and I'll wait, I'll sit and some days I don't take a single trade. If a trade doesn't set up, the market goes you know, sideways, I don't force trades and I think that's the most important thing is don't force any trades. So how long did it take you to, to get to that point? Uh, to to understand like how, how to be so so patient uh, and to uh, wait for something or first off to understand what it is exactly what you're looking for uh, that's going to be that high a probability uh, and then wait for it and then take it. So it's taken years. It took me years. I think. Throughout my training career, I've, I have a few different mentors, and I try and pick up pieces from each one of them. Okay, I think mentors are one of the best things, so you have somebody to call up, hey, what do you think about this, or I'm stuck in this trade. And a lot of them would tell me, be patient. You can make a living off one contract. I remember the very first mentor I ever had, the first thing that came out of his mind is, or his mouth was, learn one product, learn it really well, learn everything, and you'll make money. And I kind of took that and threw it out, and I was, I had a watch list of a hundred stocks, and, and, and I was always trading, and, and I think it, it, I came to a point to where I had to understand who I am, as a trader, my personality, what works for me. I'm not a long-term trader. I can't put a trade on and sit there for a month and watch it. Okay? I'm a I'm a scalper. I'm a day trader. I got I'm very impatient. So I, I had to realize who I am. And and I think for for everybody out there, sit there and try and identify who you are. What what type of trader are you? That's one of the most important things because if you're able to kind of understand who you are and what works for you, okay, don't don't worry about everybody else because the market's about you and the market, not you and everybody else or like this guy or that guy. Figure out what works for you. There, there might be somebody that goes, I dislike Fibonacci's. I'll never use Fibonacci's. Okay, hey, find what works for you. There might be somebody, hey, I love it. And keep it simple. Have two or three different trade setups and wait for those trade setups that you know work in all markets. Because one of the things is I, I've seen people jump around all the time. Um, from market to market or strategy to strategy and there, uh, there are very few things and I've been doing this for a long time, 15 plus years and a lot of stuff that I do now, I, I've been doing for the last 10 years. So they work in all markets, it's just understanding the market like today is a perfect example. I'm saying on my hands on a day like this because I don't want to get stuck, okay? I don't want to be on the wrong side of the trade. I know the market's trending lower, but I also know we could be all the way back up in a heartbeat. So this isn't my favorite market. Now, as we start to rally into certain levels, and if I see certain things and everything matches up, yes, I will take that trade, but Everything has to line up for who I am, and I think that's what you you guys all need to do is figure out what type of trade or what works for you, and learn patience to wait for a trade. Don't be the gambler. Be be and think of it as you're not going to Vegas for the weekend, but think of it more as you're trying trade to make money to make a living out of this. 
So I hope that helps. Yeah, excellent. Um, no, very, very sage advice. Um, let's see, uh, another question here. Um, uh, Hossein, yes, this is, this is recorded and will be up uh, later. Um, on uh, on the website, and then uh, uh, Jason will also have it on uh, on his site as well, I believe. Um, so um, I think that's the majority of the questions. We kind of answered a lot at at the same time here as you were talking. Um, so I kind of knocked those out along the way. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, if there's any any other last questions here, um, uh, else uh, let's uh, we'll wrap it up. No, just a lot of a lot of thank yous coming in. Excellent job. Um, okay, and uh, uh, there is a que couple of questions here about how many, what your um, position sizing is, um, contract sizing. Uh, you know, I guess it depends on your uh, how, how you know your targets and and uh, um, you know uh, stop losses as well. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so. And not to take this the wrong way, because I remember you know, I asked my mentor when I first started training this, and he goes, who cares? Who cares what my position sizing is, right? Because my account is different than your account. My risk tolerance is different than your risk tolerance. Um, and so as, as far as the position sizing, I have no problem telling you what my position sizing is. Usually, I'll do one to two, two contracts, maybe three, okay? I'm not a high risk. I'm not, I'm picking up nickels and dimes. Because what happens is, is I start to put more contracts on, I see the market in a different light, if that makes sense. Like, it's kind of like um, you look at the market now, you have no position, you're, this market's going this way, but the minute you enter that trade, what happens? Everything becomes foggy, right? You're like, oh my God, I can lose this much. You start thinking all these thoughts. But if, you, if you're small enough to where you're only doing uh, whatever your risk size is. Now, there might be somebody with a million dollar account on one contract, that's nothing, okay? Or there's a guy out there who's got 5,000 in his account, and one contract is the perfect size because of his risk tolerance. Um, but it's everybody's different at their risk. Um, I've, I've seen traders where they've made 100 grand in a day, okay? Um, and then I've seen other, I've seen other traders lose a million and not sweat. I'm like, are you serious? It, like, how, how can you put that much risk on? But everybody's different. Everybody's situation is different. And I think the best thing to answer that is what works for you? What's your limit? Know where you're at in your mental state of where can I put in, how much risk can I put on the table without it affecting me the way I see the market and panicking out of a trade or exiting a trade too early. So I hope that helps. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, uh, just answering uh, now. The questions, more questions are coming in about uh, you know your, your your stops and position sizing. But uh, I think uh, uh, we're we're out of time here. Uh, we will. Um, uh, you can follow up with Jason at, at his email there, and I'm going to put it. It's in the chat. If you you can see it there, um, and uh, I'll, I'll have it. I'll just put it here in your answer uh, as well. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, no, excellent stuff. Um, let me. Uh, I'll show you where um, uh, Jason's uh, website is here. Let me just. Um, Grab this for the second here. Okay. Um, and yep, here's his website. Okay, and let's go to the home. Yeah, and just 
And what, one thing with my website, if you scroll down a bit, um, I have a service. I'm not out here. I, I do this to help me, but um, I do weekly support resistant and trade setups um, for ten bucks a month. It gives you the zones. If you scroll down a little more, and and they're just meant uh, right there. So this is what you get. Essentially, you'll get a couple charts throughout the week, major support and resistance levels. Um, and then where open gaps are, open uh, the epochs, and then um, under the weekly support resistance, those green and red, those are the major uh, zones of where price should bounce throughout the week. So that's that's my my service. Like I said, it's you know, and then through Twitter, a private Twitter feed, I'll throw out one to three trade setups uh, per per week. Um, it's not, they're just ideas of, hey, watch the market at these levels for a bounce and all that. But this is kind of to get you going to looking for, hey, major support and resistance. I like this. I'm going to take a trade at these levels. Again, none of it's trade advice. It's just more of kind of help you as a trader to learn. Um, how to find support and resistance. So. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, let's see. Um, ah, and then uh, a Twitter uh, handle here as well. Uh, e mini scalper. Um, let me uh, put that into the chat. So you guys have that as well. Uh, and then uh, also just remind you guys that uh, we are having a, a sale here on Bookmap with the with a thirty three percent discount. So. Uh, this is for the advanced quarterly. It's only for the advanced, okay? And it is for the quarterly um, or for the yearly. Now, this is the first time this this has been um, uh, introduced. Here is uh, you can get you can subscribe for the entire year and then save uh, thirty percent, thirty three percent each each month here. So, um, um, so a good good deal on that one. Um, all right. Well, uh, I think I think that wraps it up. Um, and uh, there's there's some other questions here, uh, but um, uh, I think um, I can forward those on to you, Jason, and, uh, and 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 take it from there. Okay, cool. Yeah, and, and if anybody has questions, you just uh, send me an email, uh, Jason at Day Train Fearless, and I'll uh, I'll answer them and uh, get to them and uh, try and help you guys out as much as I can. And, and I do appreciate everything uh, everybody's showing up today too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you very much, Jason. That was uh, that was great. I mean, just, just, just great. I mean, uh, really, it's it's important to see uh, this other piece of the puzzle uh, of of fitting the order flow into um, uh, the, the trading methodology because it gives you so much information uh, and uh, it's it's good objective information. So. Um, okay. Well, uh, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Jason, and uh, we'll uh, we'll do it another time. Okay. Hey, thank you, Bruce. Thank you, everybody. And okay. uh, everybody uh, trade safe out there. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.